The housing market in the early 2000s was a perfect home buyer's market. Mortgage interest rates were low, property values were rising fast with no signs of slowing. This was a good time for the average American to get a loan. Property was considered by banks to be such a good collateral that they were willing to make mortgage deals that they assumed the buyer may not be able to pay back. But if the buyer defaulted, the bank would get a property asset whose value was constantly rising. These loans are known as subprime mortgages, given to people with bad credit ratings, no credit history, or people who have a history of late or missed payments. These loans often had higher interest rates to compensate for the risks the banks were taking on. Sometimes they had low initial interest rates to trick buyers into thinking they could afford these deals, when in reality the rate can quadruple after the low rate called a teaser changes. These loans give buyers no cushion for unexpected events like job loss or changes in the market. At the same time, people who already had well-structured mortgages wanted to access the equity in their homes, which was locked in the increasing value of their property. If a buyer bought a $400,000 house and took out a $200,000 mortgage and the value of the house rose to $800,000, the equity is $600,000. But the homeowner cannot access that cash. To do so, they refinance or take second mortgages, often borrowing much more with a greater interest rates. They then get to the equity but are stuck with a much less favorable mortgage, maybe $400,000 instead of $200,000. In a market where property values are constantly rising, this isn't a concern. This did, however, create subprime borrowers out of normal, reliable borrowers. This combined with the number of subprime borrowers that was growing as a result of the favorable market created a dangerous situation if the market were to change, but no one ever thought it would. The problem got worse when market players with lots of money to invest around the world started investing in high-return, high-risk mortgage bundles. These bundles are mortgages sold by banks, who combine prime and the riskier subprime mortgages into products for investment. Although creating better returns, investors didn't fully understand the risk they were taking on, and the banks didn't care about the quality of the deals they were making because they sold them away in bundles and therefore sold away their responsibility. The crisis came on as property values stopped rising, and many subprime borrowers found themselves unable to pay the mortgages they had structured, and they had to default. This would have been okay in a good market, but when prices fell, banks started foreclosing houses that were rapidly losing value. With more defaults, banks lost money on their foreclosures. And the mortgage bundle investors lost money on their investments, essentially stalling the cash flow. Other factors contributed to this stall, and as a result, the economy fell into a recession.